welcome to MSP lecture series on uh, main group chemistry. In my last lecture, I was discussing about uh, uh, group 14 oxides uh, and I was discussing about carbon monoxide. Uh, let me continue from where I had stopped. Uh, carbon monoxide is a very toxic gas and uh, the poisoning effect or toxicity of carbon monoxide arises from the formation of a very stable complex with hemoglobin with a consequent inhibition of O2 transport in the body. That means, uh, when we inhale carbon monoxide, uh, instead of oxygen binding to hemoglobin to take it to uh, myoglobin and release, what happens? It forms a and that is a reversible process, okay. absorption of oxygen or formation of a coordination compound of oxygen with hemoglobin iron is a reversible process. Whereas, when CO binds, it binds 300 times stronger than oxygen as a result, this is a very stable complex and once all iron atoms in hemoglobin are utilized in forming very strong carbon monoxide uh, uh, complexes essentially the oxygen supply is cut off and this is where the toxicity of CO comes into picture if we inhale. The oxidation of CO to CO2, oxidation of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide by a mixture of iodine, MnO2 and CaO2 and AgO2 at ambient temperature can be performed. So, that means the oxidation of CO to CO2 by a mixture of iodine, MnO2, CuO and Ag2O at ambient temperature, CO can be oxidized to CO2 okay, uh, when, when it is treated with some of the metal oxides that method we use in uh, extraction of uh, uh, metals from the corresponding oxide ores. The CO molecule has a very low brown state basicity and also very negligible Lewis acidity towards neutral electron pair donors. So, despite its weak Lewis acidity, however, CO is attacked by strong Lewis bases at higher pressure and somewhat at elevated temperatures. So, that means, uh, if we take CO, it can form something like this. This is essentially a formate ion. Okay. The presence of alkyl or aryl groups stabilizes the hydrates of all three elements. For example, if you take uh, carbon monoxide and treat with uh, I2O5, iodine pentoxide, it gives I2 plus 5 CO2, or one can take I2 treat with thiosulfate ion, it liberates iodide, so I minus ok. So, that means, the oxidation of CO to carbon dioxide is the basis of quantitative analysis for CO with the formation of I2 which titrated against thiosulfate and the amount of CO is measured here. So, CO is similarly oxidized by a mixture of MnO2 or cupric oxide and silver oxide at ambient temperature and this reaction is used in respirators. And CO is also a very good reducing agent and can reduce most metals from their oxides to the metal. So, I will show you a couple of examples here. For example, Fe2 O3, when it is treated with carbon monoxide, it reduces iron to iron oxides to iron through the formation of CO2. In that process, CO get is, will get oxidized. Similarly, SnO2, when it is treated with carbon monoxide, it reduces to tin through the formation of carbon dioxide. So, this is where the utility of carbon monoxide comes as a reducing agent in metallurgy for the extraction of 
metals from the corresponding oxides. Uh, selected physical properties of CO and CO2 I have given uh, in, in the table that I am going to show uh, for comparison. In fact, CO uh, is the strongest known uh, stable molecule and it confirms the efficiency of pi pi bonding between C and O. So, we have a extensive pi pi bonding between carbon and oxide. In fact, we have a triple bond that also I showed you through Lewis dot structure. Uh, for example, uh, if we start Lewis, writing Lewis structure, so initially we get something like this and then if we write here, then we will be left with the two electrons here. Now, octet is satisfied for this one, whereas octet is not satisfied. So, two electrons moves here and two will move here and this leads to the formation of this one and this lone pair is responsible for carbon monoxide to behave as a ligand and here we have pi bonding is there. So, very strong pi bonding is there. Uh, okay. So, you can compare some of the properties of uh, carbon monoxide with carbon dioxide melting point is 68. So, boiling point is 82 and whereas, boiling point for CO2 is 195 it sublimes uh, 195 Kelvin all these values are in Kelvin. And here uh, you can look into the enthalpy of formation, it is minus 110.5 for CO, whereas this is more in case of this one, so minus 393.5. And similarly, one can look into delta G minus 137, whereas in case of CO2, it is almost more than 3 times, or equivalent to 3 times minus 394. And bond energy is uh, 1075 kilojoules per mole in case of. Uh, carbon monoxide, whereas in case of carbon dioxide is 806, CO bond distance is 112.8, whereas in case of uh, uh, CO uh, we have 116. So, here we have a triple bond, here we have a, a double bond. So, that explains and dipole moment is 0 0.11, whereas in case of CO2 it is a linear symmetric molecule 0. The sulfur analog of carbon monoxide uh, and carbon dioxide are known. CS and CS2. However, CS does not exist in its independent uh, uh, form free state, CS and CS2 are also known. Uh, CS does not have an independent existence, CS is an unstable transient molecule and the CS2 is endoergic. Okay? Uh, so, some complexes with CS2 are exist and their structures are similar to those found by C1 and CO2. CS2 undergoes hydrolysis and yields trithiocarbonate ions very similar to carbonate, trithiocarbonate or thiocarbonate CS3 2 minus and this is very similar to CO2 forming carbonate ion. Okay. And, and of course, CS2 is a molecular substance similar to carbon dioxide. So, this is very similar to carbon dioxide and this is similar to carbon monoxide. Okay, the species CS uh, as I mentioned is unstable because here uh, uh, if you think of having similar multiple bond between carbon and sulfur that is unstable because of the larger difference in the uh, orbital 2 p orbital and 3 p orbital. As a result what happens because of mismatch of orbital size this multiple bonding is not effective. CS does not have independent existence, but can be stabilized by coordination to a metal by using an appropriate reagent for generation of CS2. The linear CS is a better sigma donor and pi acceptor than CO, uh, but depends on electron richness of the metal and the type of the metal we are using. And several transmetal complexes having CS are known. For example, uh, I will give you the uh, preparation of uh, such complexes. Before that, let me show you uh, the possible coordination modes of uh, uh, carbon thiomonoxide. Uh, as I said, carbon thiomonoxide is not stable above minus 160 degree centigrade. Uh, many thiocarbonyl uh, compounds are known and they can have this kind of uh, uh, coordination modes. It can be terminal. And since so, S yes, is also a soft uh, ligand with lone pairs, so it can also act as a bridging ligand 
one through C carbon lone pairs and another through sulfur lone pair and it can also bridge three metal centers or two metal centers and also it can involve in this kind of coordination. And if you just look into the stretching frequency of free CS comes around 1273 centimeter inverse and when it is uh, bridging three metal centers the value is in the range of 1040 to 1080 centimeter minus and in case of die bridging it is 1100 to 1160 when it acts as a terminal ligand a stretching frequency of CSC is around 1160 to 1410. It is little different from carbon monoxide as I had already mentioned this is a better sigma donor and a better pi acceptor compared to carbon monoxide. So, let me uh, uh, these are some of the known compounds uh, very few homolytic thiocarbonyl complexes are known like nickel tetracarbonyl is known similarly nickel tetra thiocarbonyl is can be made but but it is unstable at room temperature and many mixed ligand complexes are known with properties very similar to pure carbonyl complexes let me give you preparation of uh, some of these compounds using one or two different roots uh, let us consider uh, this one anionic FeCO4 okay. uh, this one when it is treated with CSCl2. So, this CSCl2 is uh, uh, thiophosgene COCl2 is known as phosgene COCl2 and if you replace oxygen with sulfur this is called thiophosgene when it is treated with uh, FeCO4 anionic it leads to the formation of FeCO4 CS this is very similar to FeCO5 iron pentacarbonyl and here still formed. So, one can also uh, start with CS2 for example, let us consider this uh, uh, cyclopentadienyl dicarbonyl manganese complex. Let us say L is some ligand and treat this one with CS2 it forms initially first L comes out at this stage if you add triphenylphosphine uh, it will abstract sulfur and it forms sulfur uh, triphenylphosphine sulfide and it leads to the formation of thiocarbonyl complex. So, this is another way of uh, generating in situ CS and utilizing in the formation of uh, a thiocarbyl metal complex. If we consider Wilkinson catalyst RHCl PPH3 thrice uh, this is a square planar complex this is called Wilkinson catalyst uh, this is used for hydrogenation and many catalytic reactions for a variety of organic transformations. Uh, so, this is when treated with carbon disulfide it forms RHCl CS PPH3 twice with the formation of this one. So, this is another method of preparing uh, you know CS bond metal complexes and you can see here uh, many such compounds are known here ok. That means, there is a scope for preparation of uh, thiocarbonyl complexes although it is very difficult to isolate CS ok and this is the structure of uh, the compound just now I wrote here. And this compound is very similar to Vasquez compound where CO and Cl are trans to each other and we have two triphenylphosphine trans to each other. So, here instead of carbon monoxide we have CS and also here uh, CS2 showing this kind of coordination so, that also I wrote in case of manganese. So, structures are available for these compounds that indicate these compounds are quite stable and they can be crystallized. And CO uh, is uh, very poisonous and much more reactive than nitrogen and it combines with halogens uh, ok except iodine directly. For example, if you take CO 
and if you treat with Cl2, it readily forms COCl2 and it is very poisonous uh, gas, it is called phosgene. phosgene gas. So, one has to be extremely careful, okay, if we have a source of carbon monoxide and if we have a source of halogen, they should not be put together in the same place or in the same cupboard and if any spillage is there, it is likely that there can be formation of phosgene. And CO is an excellent ligand in coordination chemistry uh, and also in organometallic chemistry. For example, we know homolyptic NiCO4 is known, chromium hexacarbonyl is known. iron pentacarbonyl is known and chromium molybdenum tungsten hexacarbonyls are known group 6 and also clusters are known for example, RU3, CO12 or even iridium. So, many such compounds are known and you will be learning more uh, in organometallic chemistry about these things. Uh, CO compares well with uh, triphenyl phosphine or in, in particular tertiary phosphines in its donor and acceptor properties. Okay. So, when we take carbon and burn in excess of oxygen that leads to the formation of carbon dioxide, solid carbon dioxide is called dry ice and it readily sublimes, but may be kept in insulated containers for laboratory use and to perform reaction at low temperature. Uh, that means, we can use them in low temperature bath. Small scale laboratory synthesis of gaseous CO2 involves this following reaction. And CO2 is the most stable oxide produced on an enormous scale industrially by the combustion of coal, oil or natural gas. Anytime we burn uh, coal, oil or natural gas, so uh, the byproduct is carbon dioxide. Okay. Uh, one uh, interesting thing about carbon dioxide is, is a very weak Lewis acid. For example, only a small fraction of molecules are complexed with water uh, to form uh, carbonic acid H2CO3 in acidic aqueous solution, but at higher pH OH coordinates to carbon atom. So, it forms hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate. So, that can be represented using these equations. And uh, in contrast to the metal complexes of carbon monoxide, metal complexes of carbon dioxide are not very common, a few compounds are known, but they are rare and far less important than those of metal carbonyls. And of course, if you find a way of making uh, carbon dioxide complexes uh, and then converting into some organic compounds, probably that comes very handy uh, in bringing down the carbon dioxide content provided we use cheaper metals such as iron. Okay. And anyway, the discussion on uh, such matter is out of context as far as uh, these lectures are concerned. Uh, neutral carbon dioxide molecule acts as a Lewis acid and the bonding is dominated by electron donation from the metal atom into an antibonding pi star orbital of CO2. So, that means, if at all if there is a uh, binding is there, it, it happens through uh, this way. And of course, I have shown couple of examples here in which uh, carbonate or carbon dioxide is binding. In case of uh, carbon dioxide, you can see here it is binding to nickel very similar to uh, carbon disulfide I showed in, uh, in previous slide with platinum. So, here uh, CO3 binding can be seen here in this cobalt complex. Carbonate ion is planar and possesses D3H symmetry. 
with all CO bonds are equal and measure 129 picometer and one in fact one can write three resonance structures for carbonate. Uh, for example, one can write here. Uh, so, a delocalized bonding picture involving pi pi interactions is appropriate and valence bond theory describes the ion in terms of three generation structures I have shown here. The CO bond distance is longer than that in CO2 and is consistent with a formal bond order of 1.33 here. So, average. So, most metal carbonates other than those of group 1 metals are sparingly soluble in water. Okay, and, uh, and here uh, there is one more carbon oxide uh, that you can see here. Uh, so, essentially a typical carbonate can be shown like this. So, one more is Okay, so, this is peroxocarbonate ion. Okay. So, a general method of preparing peroxo salts can be used to convert K2CO3 for example, to K2C2O6 I have shown here. Uh, the electrolysis of aqueous K2CO3 at 253 Kelvin using a high current density produces a salt believed to contain a peroxocarbonate ion. So, that means one can make this one starting from K2CO3, uh, K2CO3 giving K2C2O6, K2C2O6 this is called peroxocarbonate, potassium peroxocarbonate and this is potassium carbonate. Okay. A third oxide of carbon uh, is carbon suboxide uh, having the composition C3O2 okay. and one can prepare this one starting from uh, malonic acid for example, uh, on dehydrating malonic acid. using P4O10 phosphorus pentoxide okay. essentially what we are doing is dehydration of malonic acid that gives this is so C3O2 this is called carbon suboxide. And here uh, the carbon carbon distance if you look into it, it is 125 picometer whereas oxygen to carbon distance is 115 picometer. Okay. And this is say gas uh, boiling point 279 Kelvin gas and boiling point is 279 Kelvin and it polymerizes above 288 Kelvin to form a red brown paramagnetic material. Okay. Uh, of course, the structure of uh, carbon suboxide is usually described as quasi linear because IR spectroscopic and electron diffraction data for the gaseous molecule shows that the energy barrier to bending at the central carbon atom is only 0.37 kilojoules per mole that is very close to the vibrational ground state that is the reason this is called quasi linear. And of course, the next one is silicon and silicon uh, we have this SiO2 
you can see here uh, SiO2 is a non-volatile solid and occurs in many different forms nearly all of which possess lattice structures constructed of tetrahedral SiO4 building blocks. Uh, there will be something like this okay, SiO4 building blocks here and silicon is at the center and that is uh, connected to 4 oxygen atoms and each one will be having a negative charge essentially SiO4 4 minus. Okay. Uh, but overall uh, when we look into that one we have a ratio of uh, silicon to oxygen 1 is to 2 that is the reason formula uh, is referred to as SiO2 and each uh, unit is connected to the next by sharing an oxygen atom to give SiO Si bridge something like this. Okay, so, it is something like this okay. and uh, you can see here at uh, how uh, one form of uh, uh, silica uh, in, in different form of uh, containing other uh, uh, elements main group elements as well as uh, trans elements that can be converted to something else it, it shown in this uh, chart here. Beta quads can be converted to tridimide or cristobalite or alpha cristobalite or alpha tridimide or beta quads that can be converted to alpha quadrice uh, by altering the uh, temperature. So, that means you can see a transition that occurs between polymers of silica or silicon dioxide. So, I would be discussing uh, more aspects of uh, silicon oxides in my next lecture. So, until then have a pleasant reading of uh, uh, group 14 chemistry until I return with my next lecture. Thank you very much.